congratulations Toastmasters and I am your platform partner Dwayne Jackson and this is going to be a mentorship video that is a part of a series of mentorship videos that I want to create. I'm not necessarily trying to be your mentor, but I do recognize that many Toastmasters, when they join, they don't get mentors. And uh, even if you do, you may not get uh, all the information that you need. So I just want to help you make this the best investment that you can while you're in Toastmasters because I know it's very important that you do so. So first of all, what you'll see is there's a picture of me, and I apologize that I don't have a lot of visuals for this video. I just want to get you the information. But you see there is a picture of me there in front of the, the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago, which is where I'm from. And the picture is pretty interesting because I wanted to show the importance of being yourself authentically. I could have chose other pictures to make me look you know, different, to make me look even more professional or to look a certain way. I think it's very important that you be yourself through your speaking journey, through your personal development journey. And also it's important that if you're going to be speaking on stage, the person that people see on stage should be the same person they see off stage. It shouldn't be a, a, a difference, right? As a professional speaker, I, I believe this is very important that you're the same person uh, all the time. So with that being said, let's get directly into the mentorship program. So, so first, I just want to talk about this specific video is catered more for brand new members. The rest of the video series, I'll talk about other things that are not necessarily for new people, but this is primarily for a person that's brand new, haven't even got their manuals yet. You just pay for your dues and you're like, what's the next step? So uh, I also want to give you some brief stuff really quick, just some brief things. Not everything, just a few brief things to keep in mind. So one, write down your goal. You need to know your goal, know why you're joining. Think of Toastmasters as like going to the gym. This is where you exercise your muscles. So when, if you're going to the gym, you need to have a goal. Are you trying to lose weight? Are you trying to put on muscle? Are you trying to, you know, what are you trying to do? And based on that, uh, you need to take on a different training program, right? You might need to do more cardio or you might need to do weights or you might need to do Zumba, you know. So you need to know, are you are you here mainly to develop speaking skills? Are you want to be a better leader? Are you want to be do, do more networking and meet people? You need to write that down. And it's okay if it changes, but at least when you come in, you want to know from the beginning. So let's talk about those goals really quick. So let's talk about speaking goals. There's 15 different manuals that you can choose from. 15 manuals and so that means and they're advanced manuals right this is this is these manuals will everything they'll cover everything from if you want to be a professional speaker and get paid or if you want to be let's say a storyteller uh, and you want to work on those skills or if let's say you want to be more on an executive speaker and you know for your job things like that or you want to be a comedian and an entertainer. So you need to know what you want to do at the beginning. So that at the beginning, so when you first start, now you can train. That way, every speech you give needs to somehow relate and be uh, in alignment with what you ultimately want to do in the long term. What I see, what I believe is a mistake is that many people come in and they just start speaking and they're giving speeches just to fulfill the requirement. And it's not building what their main goal was so you're not getting ultimately what you wanted to out of it and that's the quickest way to leave so for example i know like when i first came in as a toastmaster my goal was i wanted to make money as a speaker i wanted to be i wanted to be a better salesperson i wanted to market myself i wanted to do it to grow my business so what i did was I would make sure that when I went through my speeches, I would make sure that I, I worked on my storytelling. I worked on, you know, things that I already knew. I talked about stuff that I was passionate about. And I spoke, I spoke in a way if I was trying to persuade people every single speech, even if that wasn't the objective, I, I incorporated certain elements of that. So that way, every speech that I gave, I was able to take it outside of Toastmasters and use it. And I hope that you can apply the same thing, that you can use your Toastmaster speeches to make one main big speech or to just use it in your day-to-day -day life because that's what it's about. So again, outside of that, outside of speaking goals, you might want to have the leadership goals. And if that's the case, this is perfect. You know, tell your people in your club so that you can sign up for roles and do things like that. Um, or, you know... Uh, the last thing is some people want to develop networking skills. They want to network with people, should I say, build relationships. Now, this is great, especially depending on the city that you are living in. Because like in Chicago, there's over 200 clubs. The downtown clubs, we have business clubs, we also have community clubs, 
every club is different so because you if you know you want to network that way you can tell the leaders of your club and now they can help you with networking more and so now you can you can know you can learn about all right here are the conventions that are coming up here are the conferences that are coming up and how can i volunteer and participate and who are the people that i need to know uh in the tls who are the the you know the leaders and the directors so you want to know that and write that down and this is this is your goal. This is also called your why did I join and that why should make you cry. Write that thing down. Write that down and put it on your mirror so that you can see it every day or put it in your Toastmasters book so you remind yourself because it's going to get tough. And when it gets tough, you need to stay strong. So outside of that, once you know your why, now it's about going through those manuals. Let's get into some practical, tangible stuff now. So getting your if you paid your dues already, your manuals should be on the way. They come in the mail. It takes about a week to two weeks to get them. Once those manuals arrive, all right, you want to immediately read those manuals. I'm telling you, so many people join Toastmasters and never really open the manual. And if you look in the manual, most of your questions will be answered. You want to know how long is your speech? If you look in the manual, it tells you. It will tell you the first speech is four to six minutes. All the other speeches in that first manual are typically five to seven minutes, except for the last one. So you want to know that. You want to know what are the objectives. I see so many speakers, they're given a speech. The speech is about using visual aids, and they don't use any visual aids. And it's obvious they did not read the manual. So read your manual. Know your objectives. Know your time constraints. And also know what you're going to be evaluated on and meet with your evaluator before you give the speech. So that way you can talk to them over the phone. So that way y'all can be on the same page and, you know, you can get the best benefit uh, out of it if you and your evaluator have a talk before the meeting and before you give that speech. So read that manual, know those speech objectives, evaluations, and also you can learn the meeting protocol, learn that. Learn, you know, things about the roles, right? Who's the Toastmaster, what is, what is the Toastmaster role, what is the evaluator role? Because you're gonna, of course you learn as you do these positions, but honestly, if you read the book, it'll tell you a whole lot about it. It'll tell you, you know, if you're evaluating, this is these are the things you should be looking for. If you're the grammarian, these are the things you should look for. So it gives you an idea. That doesn't mean that you have to stick only to that, but that gives you a basis so that you're not just walking in. Because the one of the things you don't want to do is you start out with doing things wrong and then you continue to practice those wrong bad habits. That's the quickest way for you to want to leave the club. And it's hard to change once you've been going in the wrong direction. I've seen many people do this. All right. So now that you've read the manual and you, or you're at least going through the manual, you want to start giving your speeches immediately, in my opinion. Now, everyone has a different goal. I know people that they were in Toastmasters for a year and only gave one speech. If that's you, that's fine. I, but and me as your mentor, that's not acceptable. As your mentor, I will push you and I'm going to say, look, you need to give your icebreaker speech as soon as possible because the, if you want to get over your fear, you have to just go out and do it. OK, so immediately start speaking. In fact, book your first three speeches with your VP of education uh, or your mentor. Book it with them immediately. OK, and, and they'll help you book it in my club. We also have a link on our website where people can sign up for the agenda. So if you're in BLT uh, 708-973, go on to that link and then sign up for the positions yourself. And also uh, you'll have the VPAE will follow up with you to make sure you have what you need. So do that ASAP. Also, so while you're speaking, um, you know, you want to you, you got the opportunity to go to different clubs. OK, you got the op some people might tell you, you don't go to different clubs. I'm going to tell you personally, my experience, that's something for you to determine, depending on your city, depending on how your comfortability is. But for me, I went to I joined two clubs when I first learned about Toastmasters. And I, that was a great thing because I was able to get different evaluations from different perspectives. I think it, it's better when you join two clubs because I was in a corporate club and I was also in a community club. So I, I was able to learn a lot of very different things that some people, you know, don't teach you. So you one club that you're in, they might be making you think this is one way to do it. And you thinking that's the only way. But you join another club and you see so many different options. So you want to join different clubs, get meet different personalities, different groups, different energy. You want to go to different clubs. And uh, and it's free to do that if you're a paid member. You can go to any club. Just contact them in advance. 
All right. Also, invite guests. Get people to come and support. You know, get your family, get friends, get somebody to come and support and uh, uh, come and see you speak. That's very important. Practice, practice, practice. You know, practice your icebreaker speech. Most of these speeches, honestly, this CC the manual that you're going through, keep in mind, this is not about making this thing perfect. You're going to get an opportunity uh, to get better as you go. So put your mission in motion. Everything's going to start growing. All right. So you get better. You ain't got to get it right. You just got to get it going. And then everything's going to start growing. So what I am saying is don't worry about being perfect. Don't say, well, I just don't feel like I'm prepared. I don't feel like I'm ready for it. Look, just just do it. Do it. And then the next speech, you'll get better. You'll prepare and get better as you go. So give that speech. Get help. Read the book. It's not hard. It's only five to seven minutes. Go ahead and do it. All right. Keep a record of all of your evaluations. Every time someone evaluates you, have a notebook or just put them in your manual. Eventually, Toastmasters is going to get rid of physical manuals. So you want to start learning how to keep a record of your evaluations. And, and, and every evaluation, again, you want to learn how to be a good evaluator. Go online, research what does it mean to be a good evaluator. A good evaluator, they're going to let you know what your strengths are. Uh, they're going to help you focus on how to meet goals using your strengths. Um, they're going to tell you about some of your areas of opportunity for growth, but they mainly should be showing you how uh, how they made how they felt. So the, the evaluator can only speak from them for their own personal experience, opinion. They are not speaking for everybody. So if they say, hey, man, you did a great speech, you did an awesome job. That doesn't mean you did. That's just their opinion. Everyone, there could have been some other people that hated your speech. I know this is hard to hear, but I just want I want to be honest with you and let you know this is that that's that's what it is. So when you're evaluating other people, it's about giving your opinion as you saw it, as you heard it, as you experienced it. All right. Also, apply all of this stuff in the real world. And this is why it's important. This is why I'm being honest, because ultimately, even though this like Toastmasters is the gym, right? This is where you get strong. So when you go to the gym, you're going to make mistakes. It's the learning laboratory. But when you go in the real world, this is when you're supposed to you go out and it's going to be different. Everybody's not going to clap. Everyone's not going to be quiet. Everyone's not going to give you their full attention. People will be on their phones. People will be distracted. So this is why you want to apply all of these skills to the real world. So just go out and Toastmasters. Don't be afraid. Do what you got to do. Give these speeches and and, 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 and don't get offended if someone gives you a bad evaluation because, it, again, it's just to make you better. And when you go in the real world, you want to, you know, it, it might be a, a worse of consequences. You might lose your job if you get a horrible evaluation. So, again, set those goals. Set a date when you want to be uh, done with your CC. Like me, I was done with my CC probably about eight months. And then I did a second and third CC in like six months each. And you can go at your own pace. You can do a, a and a CC is the is the manual, the competent communicator. That's the first ten speeches. You can do that thing in a year. You can do it. I've seen people do it in three months. I've seen people do it in two, three years. That's up to you. But you want to set some type of goal. I say be aggressive with it because you can always give speeches at other clubs. And if you didn't do a great job the first time, you can always do that CC again a second time. So I'm not saying that you should run through the speeches, but I am saying don't take years to give, you know, you have to put time in if you want to get better. That's my main point is speak to get better, to build confidence, make adjustments and improvements. And also set some milestones for yourself. So, you know, set some goals to say, hey, I want to have, you know, at least, you know, uh, one or two speeches that I can take away and use in my real job or use in my real business uh, within, you know, three to five months and set a date. So that way you're working towards that. For me, one of the best things I did is I joined the speech competitions. And that really pushed me to step outside of my comfort zone. It's one of the greatest things I've ever done as a Toastmaster. I encourage you to do the same. So with that being said, listen, this video has been going a little bit longer than I wanted to. But, hey, stay encouraged. Make sure you watch the other videos. They're here to help. Talk with your mentors. And just keep pushing. Keep speaking. Get that stage time and never give up. Keep studying. And, uh... Try to get audience reactions. Make your speeches relevant to the people, to the audience. The speeches, even though they're about you, make them relevant to the audience. Think about what would you be thinking if you were sitting in their seats. 
right? And then, you know, use the word you. Don't say, hey, I'm here for this. I did this. Talk about you. Say what or what, you know, I know you are probably interested in this. So talk about what they are interested in and give them information. Less is more. You don't need to do a whole lot. I'm just squeezing in a lot because I'm in a rush. But in the, when you're giving a real speech, you don't need to overdo with a whole bunch of content. Connect with their emotions. Let people build trust. Tell your story. A story is more powerful than a speech all the time for the most part. Uh, and so, and then, like I said, just 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 make sure that it's, it's relevant, it's fun, it's engaging. Nothing is worse than you giving a speech and everyone's quiet the entire time. That means people were just being polite. All right. They, if they're not reacting, they're just being polite. People should do something. They need to laugh. They need to make some sort of, oh, my gosh, they need to say something. There needs to be some sort of interaction. That's how you know they're feeling you and they're really in tune. So with that being said, hey, keep speaking, keep speaking, stay hungry, stay humble. And I am Jackson, your platform partner. Uh, follow me, subscribe to the page, and I look forward to seeing you all uh, on stage.